Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen and cooking with Sky Bobby. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to cook some Louisiana seafood gumbo. Let's get into it. I'm going to be making the most flavorful, juiciest seafood gumbo you've ever had. And I know a lot of people don't want to make gumbo because it takes a lot of time and it sounds complicated, but it's actually easy and I'm going to show you how to make it simple and fun. The hardest part of making gumbo is the roux. It's a lot of preparation, a lot of time consuming, and then once you get over that, it's just dumping in your seafood. And today's gumbo, I'll be using some crab as well as uh, andouille sausage. A little chicken, so we definitely get a protein, and of course shrimp. I'll be having jumbo shrimps as well as bay shrimps. My mouth is watering already, y'all. I can't wait to get into it. Now growing up, it was a family tradition to either cook gumbo on Christmas or New Year's Eve, depending on if it was my mother cooking it or my grandmother. I love when my grandmother cooked it because she would cook it on New Year's Eve and all my uncles and aunts would come over. And uh, it was so funny because my family loves seafood and we love some crab and when someone's cooking gumbo, we are coming over. You can get the family over easily by cooking gumbo. And one of the things, one of my fondest memories, my memories, memories is that whenever my uncles and aunt would come over, they'd go straight to the gumbo and get all the crab out, all the shrimp. It was like fishing for crab and gum, crab and shrimp inside the gumbo. And by the time we got to us little kids, it was nothing but the brew left over and we would just get a little bowl of that and some rice. And, uh, but I was happy about that because just seeing family, but that's all it was about, just family. And when you finally graduated to the big table, you would get maybe a crab leg here or one jumbo shrimp here, but that's about it. And uh, a lot of you make gumbos your own special way, how your grandmother made it, how your mother would make it, but you can make it any way you want to because that is your business. However, seafood gumbo does not mean adding fish or clams or mussels or oysters. No, that is Shapino, and we are making seafood gumbo. So get into it. Since the roux is probably the hardest part to make, I'm just gonna focus on that in today's video, show you how to make some shrimp broth, and then pretty much cut up everything, throw it in there. We're gonna saute and brown the sausage, use the oil to make our base. I'm already smelling this, guys, I can't wait. I'll be cooking in my La Croissette Dutch oven as well as using my uh, stainless steel big pot to make the, uh, the total gumbo. I like the Dutch oven because you can burn it as much as you want to and you still can't ruin it. I use a wooden spoon, spoon to make sure that I'm not um, scratching out my uh, Dutch oven because I pay some coins for that and I don't want to mess it up. Now normally my grandmother would prep all the ingredients the night before and then marinate it all the morning of either Christmas or New Year's Eve and that will even give it more flavor because it sits in and the crab flavor and juice gets all into the roux and you got some delicious gumbo. But for TV purposes, we're gonna do it all at one time. I won't bore you by showing you all the cutting and all that. I'm just gonna focus on the roux and show you how to brown the sausage and use that flavor to uh, enhance your gumbo. I'll list all the ingredients in the description down below and how to prepare everything, but basically you just need about three pounds of peeled shrimp two pounds of andouille sausage, and about two pounds to three pounds of crab. You can use king crab, snow crab, Dungeness crab, that's your business. About three ounces of chicken broth, a half a cup of vegetable oil or corn oil, one cup of all-purpose flour, a half a cup of butter, a half a cup of finely chopped yellow onions, one cup of finely chopped green peppers, one cup of chopped celery, two teaspoons of minced garlic, one teaspoon of Cajun or Creole seasoning, that's your business. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, say that 10 times, Worcestershire. <laughs> one and one half ounce of beer, so a bottle of beer, whatever you drink, doesn't matter, darker the better. And uh, three to five bay leaves, one teaspoon of dried thyme, and uh, about half a cup of green onions, and one fourth cup of fresh parsley.
as I said before, it takes a lot of preparation, a lot of ingredients to make the good old Louisiana seafood gumbo. And if you want to make it right, what I usually do is start the night before. So I had already prepped all my chopping and cutting up the night before. And now we're just gonna throw everything in the pot. Gumbo's easy to make. It's very intimidating because there's just so many ingredients. And here are the ingredients. So the meat selection I'll be using is andouille sausage, but you can use whatever sausage that you want. That's your business. Gonna use Dungeness crab, or you can use whatever crab you want. Gonna use extra large jumbo shrimp. They are huge. And uh, I'm gonna add some tiny bay shrimps. I used to use fresh bay shrimps, but couldn't find any, so I'm just using the can, but that's my business. And I had peeled the shrimps and I kept them here in the bag. And what I'm gonna do with those is I'm gonna uh, put that in a pot, boil it to make my uh, seafood broth, throw a little butter in there, and then mix it with my roux. And for the wet ingredients, I'm gonna use Worcestershire sauce. Say that 15 times, Worcestershire, Worcestershire. <laughs> And I'm going to use chicken broth and whatever beer you would like to use, darker the better, that's your business. I'm gonna use a little bit of corn oil or vegetable oil, menace garlic, and some butter. And some of my seasonings will be the Creole uh, seasoning, of course, thyme leaves, bay leaves, a little bit of flour, and of course you gotta have gumbo filet. Come on, Zattermans. And of course, to make the gumbo a little bit of healthiness, I'm gonna add a little bit of onions, bell peppers, celery, parsley, and green onions. So the pots I'll be using is a Le Croissant Dutch oven. Yes, I am. And also a 10 quart stainless steel will be the finished uh, pot that we'll be using mixing all the ingredients together. But we're gonna start with the seafood broth into the Le Croissant pot. Start by heating up your uh, Dutch oven. You wanna put some butter in there. I'm gonna throw the shells from the crab. Start adding your chicken broth. And let it come to a boil for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna simmer it for 15 minutes. Stirring about every five minutes, making sure the butter is melted. So we're gonna let that simmer for about 15 minutes. I'm gonna cover the top over it and put that back in the back burner. And we're gonna go ahead and start our roux. So first thing we wanna do is brown the sausage. And if you can look real close, I add some extra seasoning. You just wanna throw it in there. I have the pan heating up for about medium heat. I'm gonna mix that around a little bit. They're already cooked, so you just wanna brown them up a little bit. And you wanna create some oil and get some of that seasoning in the oil, and then you're gonna add your vegetables. And as you can see, I still have the seafood broth uh, simmering in the back over there. It should be almost done, so keep an eye on that. Once your sausage is nice, golden, and brown, you'll see like a little burn marks on the bottom of the pan. That's a good thing. You wanna scoop out the sausage and put them away for now. Now you wanna lower your heat and add the butter. Roll that around a little bit. Add the oil. Make sure the butter melts. Stirring it around. I already smell my gumbo, folks. Now that the butter is melted, we're gonna put the flour in, and you just wanna put a little bit at a time so you won't overburn it, or underburn it, or overburn it. Keep doing that, keep stirring it. I think my mother would be proud of me making it from scratch, folks. And if you can hear, I'm scraping the bottom of the pan so I can get some of that char inside the roux. And you just keep putting your flour in until it's all gone. Don't worry about burning your pots. Once you put the beer in and some other ingredients, it'll come right on off. Now that everything is stirred in, we're gonna cook this for about 30 minutes and you wanna keep checking it about every 10 minutes and you're gonna see the color change. So right now you see the color is this color first 10 minutes, and the next 10 minutes I'll show you how the color is going to look. I can see the color is getting a little bit darker. We want to be a little bit more darker. It's been 10 minutes, so we have about 15 more minutes. And I'm just lightly brushing some of the burnt off the pot into the roux. All right, see that golden brown? That is the magic color right there. That's the color you want, nice and brown. So it's been 30 minutes, so we are complete with the browning of it. 
Now after five minutes, you want to add the onions. And you want to cook them for about five minutes. After you cook the onions, because it's the hardest to cook, for five minutes, you start adding your other vegetables. Oh, I love the smell of the cooked onion. Get into it. So after five minutes cooking your onions, you want to add the rest of your veggies, your green onions, your bell peppers, your celery. Get into it. Mix it all up for about another two minutes, and you're going to add your minced garlic. Now it's time to add your minced garlic. You want to blend that in for about one minute. Then you want to start adding your favorite beer, whatever beer you want, that's your business. You want to cook it long enough to clear, cook the alcohol out of it. And I don't know if you noticed, but you can see some of the charred part of it, burn, char, or whatever, is coming off now. I think that's the secret recipe for the gumbo, it's the beer. I like to use a dark beer, but if you want a light beer, again, that's your business. So now once you have that all stirred up and the garlic all mixed in, we're gonna add our broth that we were steaming up earlier with the shrimp uh, shells. So you go ahead and get a strainer and add that. Carefully not to put any of the shells in there. Mm, that smells good. Now we wanna add some of our dry ingredients, our Creole seasoning and some of our gumbo filet. Mix that up in there real good. Now you wanna add your thyme in there and your Worcestershire sauce. Who can say that correctly? I call it the W as well, but mix that in there. By now you should be smelling gumbo. Get into it. Can you smell it? Mm -hmm. You ready for this? Yes, sir. <laughs> now that you have your house smelling like gumbo, you wanna add your sausage in there. That's a lot of sausage. Stir it up a little bit. Mix, and last but not least, you wanna add your bay leaves in there. Then we're gonna bring it up to a boil. Now that we have it back up to a boil, we're gonna simmer it down and cover it up and have it simmer for about 30 minutes and we'll come back and check up on it. You guys, I forgot to add my secret recipe that my family would add to it. To make it even more meatier, we add uh, shredded chicken breast. So I'm gonna add that into it right now and then we're gonna bring it to a simmer. So while the gumbo is simmering, I'll tell a little story about how I love holiday cooking. Uh, I think it's one of the times where my family, we didn't have Sunday dinner like we see in the movies every Sunday. The family would come over, but definitely for Christmas, New Year's, uh, 4th of July, family reunions, my family would cook these big feasts like gumbo. They would cook, uh, that was for good luck, uh, black eyed peas for New Year's, all the soul food, collard greens, macaroni and cheese, catfish. Um, the food brought the family, but once the family was there, it was just being family, and uh, that's something I still cherish to this day. So this year is kind of hard because that we all know what's happening all throughout the year, and we can't be with all our families. I hope this will bring a little bit of joy that start your own tradition, start making your own gumbo from scratch, doing things that you love, and um, you'll start feeling better. When you start thinking positive things, things start turning around, and that's what we're doing. And uh, now back to the gumbo. Let's check up on our little gumbo. If I had smell of vision y'all, get into it. So now we're gonna add a little bit of parsley. And you wanna save a little bit for decoration to make it look like the restaurant style. And if you wanna add your extra like base shrimp or um, you can use crab or whatever you like, that's your business, add that to it. You want it to cook for about five minutes. I'm going to add my seasoned shrimp. The bigger, the better. Get the extra large jumbos if you can. Now this can feed probably up to 10 people and it's just the two of us. So what I'm going to do is probably just um, have enough for two days and then I'm, we'll freeze it and have the rest for uh, New Year. So uh, kill two birds with one stone. A lot of people, especially in the African-American families, they make uh, gumbo for good luck on uh, New Year's instead of Christmas. That's their business. And they're able to have some black eyed peas. I think last year, uh, I didn't eat my black eyed peas because my luck was like, what the heck? 
now that the shrimp is in there, you want to bring it back up to a boil for about another five minutes to get the shrimp nicely cooked, but not overcook. You want some strong, tender shrimps. And then we'll add the crab, and that is the last ingredient to add, folks. I know, it takes forever. But the reward, you will be so thankful. So I'm gonna let that uh, boil for about five more minutes, and then we'll check on it. Okay, I am going to add the best part, the favorite part, the crab. As I say, my family, we used to go fishing for the crab. And again, you can use whatever crab you want. If you want Dungeness crab, that's your business. If you want snow crab, that's your business. If you got a lot of money and you want some of that Alaskan king crab, that's your business. It's just Kelly and I, so it's a lot of crab for us. But definitely get as much crab as you can in that pot because when your family comes over, they're gonna want this. Mm. Make sure you get it deep into the broth, or the roux, I should say, the roux. And I'm gonna let that simmer probably about another 20 minutes and check on it and see if it's ready. I think we are done. We have gumbo. I will show you how it's served in the restaurant where you have rice in the soup bowl and you spread around the gumbo, put the crab on top to allure you to the fabulousness of it. And uh, it's still early for us to eat dinner, so it's gonna be a little while before we eat dinner, but when I prepare dinner, I will show you the final preparation for the gumbo around. And for presentation, I always put like a little crab leg on the side. And maybe a shrimp or two. Throw a little parsley. There you have it. Get into it. All I have for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed me making my Louisiana seafood gumbo. It was a pleasure of making it for you and thank you for watching Cooking with Sky Bobby. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel at Sky Bobby TV. You can always check me out on my Instagram account at Sky Bobby TV. I gotta go. It's a new year. Bye girl. Bye.